Hurricane Beryl has strengthened into a rare Category 5 hurricane, the earliest Category 5 hurricane on record in the Atlantic Basin. I'm Mike Nasa with the latest on this very powerful hurricane that has left a path of ruin in the uh, southern Windward Islands near Grenada, St. Vincent, and the island of Karaku, where the eye actually went over as a strengthening Category 4 earlier on Monday, July 1st. Taking a look at the latest particulars on Hurricane Barrel, it is at 13.8 north, 64.9 west. Maximum sustained winds have increased to 160 miles per hour. That makes it a Category 5 hurricane on the Saffir-Simpson scale. The pressure is down to 938 millibars, but it looks like it might have leveled off. And that's not that low for a Category 5. Hurricane Andrew... Uh, was 165, 170 miles an hour, and that pressure was 922, and Hurricane Michael was 160 miles per hour like this, and that pressure was 919. So 938 is pretty high, and that's because this hurricane is in an area of higher background pressure. It's moving west-northwest at 22 miles per hour, and it might increase in forward speed a little bit more throughout Tuesday, and we uh, will watch it continue to move towards the west-northwest with a gradual bend towards the west as it moves into the western Caribbean, putting areas most at risk as being Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and the Yucatan Peninsula. You guys are up next in the line of fire. After that, it's kind of uncertain. Right now, it looks like it'll move over the Yucatan and emerge into the western Gulf of Mexico or the Bay of Campeche as a tropical storm sometime by the weekend. Where it goes from there, we don't know. The likeliest uh, scenario would be for it to continue west into Mexico, although there is always a chance that it does bend a little more north. How strong it is, we don't think it'll be a Category 5 hurricane, but we uh, just don't know at this point. We do have a hurricane warning in effect for the island of Jamaica right here, and that is because you are squarely in the path of Hurricane Barrel, and we have a tropical storm warning for the south coast of the Dominican Republic and the southern coastline of Haiti. Notice this wind field is larger than it was 24 or 36 hours ago, and so as the hurricane moves to your south, those tropical storm force winds may clip areas of Hispaniola. Here's the latest satellite imagery of Hurricane Barrel, and again, what a monster hurricane. This is a beautiful little buzzsaw pinwheel with deep convection surrounding the entire area there around the eye. That's called the CDO, the Central Dense Overcast. And then notice how the clouds that are very cold, cold cloud tops, very dark clouds, notice how they warm right around the eye, and that's where the eye wall is, and that's where those winds are 160 miles per hour. That eye wall with those devastating winds went just north of the island of Grenada over the island of Karaku earlier, and it caused a lot of problems, a lot of destruction. I saw some of the images out of those uh, islands, and uh, the trees were stripped bare, roofs blown off of homes, quite a wall up there from this major, major hurricane. Again, it looks like it's moving pretty steadily towards the west-northwest, maybe even a northwest component. So if you are in Jamaica, it is headed your way. But like I said in past updates the last few days, a lot of times hurricanes, especially strong ones, will dance around the island, kind of move to the north or move to the south. Nevertheless, we have had them move straight across, and you can't bet on whether or not it'll miss you. Now, when I look at this satellite... We keep waiting for this thing to run into wind shear, and it does appear, if you look on these clouds here blowing, it is running into shear. And it does look like it's starting to shed kind of its outer skin and ball up in the face of wind shear, and that will likely weaken the hurricane. Here's the wind shear map. This is upper level shear, and this is going to begin to undercut the hurricane. Here you can see it better on the shear tendencies. The blues are very favorable. The oranges are higher wind shear. So the hurricane is going to move into unfavorable wind shear conditions over the next 24 hours. And then we're going to have mid-level shear as well aimed directly at the hurricane, which could undercut it. So you're going to see the eye kind of get discombobulated, and the hurricane will weaken uh, dramatically from a Category 5 and then continue to drop from there. Now, here's the European Ensemble models. Now, these were as of 12Z, and they continue the hurricane near or over Jamaica. 
and then take it towards the northeast Yucatan, which is what we think will happen. However, some of the models bring it back out into the western Gulf of Mexico and begin to move it more towards the northwest, and the European models want to make it a little bit of a stronger storm than what we would like to see. Now, if you look just at the 18Z models just out to this point, this is much more reasonable that it's going to bend west, strike the Yucatan, come on out as a tropical storm, but they still have that little bend north at the end. And then the GFS model, same thing. Uh, not as strong as the European, but if you look at the consensus, bending it back to the northeast, towards the north Gulf Coast, sometime in about a week or so, the National Hurricane Center doesn't think the environment's going to be that great in the Gulf of Mexico, number one. Number two, we don't know what shape the hurricane's going to be in. Is it going to go through the Yucatan Channel or clip Cancun and not weaken? Is it going to get buried over the Yucatan and weaken dramatically? We just don't know. And uh, it's just too early to say right now. The H-Worf model, the hurricane model here, shows our storm as a Category 5, weakening down to a 4, and then moving very close to Jamaica as a very powerful hurricane, but weakening dramatically down to a Category 1 hurricane or even a tropical storm, and then making landfall right over the island of Cozumel as a minimal hurricane or even a strong tropical storm, but then coming back out and moving in a northwesterly direction as a Category 1 hurricane towards Texas. Now, this would be Monday, uh, Sunday, July 7th. So we have a week to watch it. We've got plenty of time. And if you're along the Gulf Coast of Louisiana and Texas, keep an eye out. Obviously, it's a Category 5 hurricane right now, but we just don't know the shape it's going to be in when it gets to the Yucatan or when it gets to Mexico. We just can't tell how fast it'll weaken. This is a hurricane that looks a lot like Hurricane Beryl. There's Beryl right there. And this hurricane was Emily. Emily was the only recorded Category 5 in July until today with Hurricane Beryl. And this was in July of 2005. And it was July 17th. So Beryl beat uh, Hurricane Emily and is the earliest Category 5. This was when Emily was south of Jamaica, and it ended up making landfall in the Yucatan as a Category 4 hurricane. And when you look at the track of Hurricane Emily back in 2005, it moved very near Grenada as a Category 1 hurricane, and then it became a Category 4 and 5 as it moved through the Caribbean and slammed into the Yucatan. There were massive evacuations that saved many people in the Yucatan and Mexico. And then it was a Category 3 as it moved into areas of northern Mexico, well south of the Rio Grande. Because of Hurricane Dennis a week and a half before hitting the panhandle of Florida, and then in August, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita in September, Wilma in October, that epic historic 2005 season, the name Emily was never retired. But anybody who tracked it like I did will never forget Hurricane Emily. It was uh, similar to Beryl, but not as strong in the islands like Beryl was. But this track is kind of what we might see with Hurricane Beryl. Maybe a little different, maybe a little bit further north, and then maybe a little bit further west in the long run. We just don't know. But that is a good indicator that Emily is a good analog for Hurricane Beryl. And the 2005 hurricane season gave us the Greek alphabet and Katrina and Rita and Wilma. So, you know, somebody said on the internet, I read on social media, somebody said if there was a June 31st, we would have had a Category 5 hurricane in June today. This is very, very bad news, guys. You do not get Category 5 hurricanes every hurricane season, let alone on July 1st. And if this is the second out of three named storms we've had, the first hurricane, the first major hurricane, and a Category 5 that devastated the southern Windward Islands as a Category 4. What the heck else does this hurricane season have and how it headed our way? We just don't know. We'll have to wait and see come August and September, but it's going to be a busy one. There's a look at Hurricane Barrel leaving the Windward Islands. Looking a little flat there, like I said. Notice right there. See that flatness I just drew? Look at that. So it will encounter a more rough environment. But nevertheless, tonight it gets to shine as the earliest Category 5 hurricane on record, uh, one of only two during the month of July, 
and that is a harbinger of a very busy hurricane season to come. I'm Mike Naso with the latest on extremely dangerous Hurricane Burl leaving the Windward Islands in ruins after a Category 4 strike near Grenada today.